Hey guys, I've got something really exciting for you. I'm gonna show you five Photoshop tips that you probably don't know, and I'm actually gonna throw in a bonus tip at the end. So without further ado, boom, let's get started. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, the best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. So without any further ado, I'm gonna jump in and I'm gonna show you these five tips plus the bonus tip. So the first one I'm gonna show you is a cool hidden command. So what we're gonna do is just gonna add a blur to this. So let's just choose filter blur and we're gonna grab a Gaussian blur and we'll just give it, you know, a certain amount, like maybe about there and I'm just gonna click okay. So at this point here, all I'm doing is applying a filter. Here's the tip. If you go under edit, you're gonna see something that says Fade Gaussian Blur. Now this works with any filter inside of Photoshop, but the trick is you can't do anything else. If you apply any other commands or change anything, you'll lose this. So it's only available immediately after you've applied the filter. So we can go up under here and we can change the blend mode. Put this into like an overlay blend mode and we can apply a different opacity. So, you know, we could take it all the way down bring it up, get a nice kind of softening kind of effect. Tip number two, and this one here is actually gonna be a couple of little extra bonus tips thrown in at the same time. So if we wanna open this up, we wanna apply shadow highlights. So what I wanna do though, is I'm gonna convert this to a smart object. So we're just gonna right click and convert to a smart object. Cause the reason for that is if you look under the adjustments, you're not gonna see shadow highlight there. However, now that we've converted this to a smart object and we go under the image adjustments and we're gonna see shadow highlight there. And I'm gonna apply it. And now this is actually gonna work exactly the same as a adjustment layer because now it's non-destructive. However, that's not even the tip. I'm gonna show you more options. So one of the things when we go in here and we start to use this, you know, we're adjusting the amount and sometimes you wanna get really precise and it's hard to do that. Well, what we wanna do is if we go over here, whenever there's a uh, number box, you'll see to the left here, it's known as a scrubby slider. Well, here's the thing, if you hit the control key or the command key, you can turn any numeric field into a scrubby slider. But that's not the tip. The tip is if I hold down the Alt or the Option key, now it moves at a very small increment. See that, it's moving at one tenth of the speed and now you can get the precision you need working inside of there. So let me just recover our highlights a little bit here. And I'm just gonna kind of play around with the tone and the radius. Okay, so now here's the second part of this tip. This doesn't really look good until you clip the black and the white. Now if we go here and we clip the white, I'm just kind of scrubbing over that and it's taking a long time to get there. So here's the tip, is if I hit the control key or command, or I can just grab from here, it doesn't matter. If you hit the shift key, now this is gonna move at 10 times the speed, see that? So now I can very quickly get to where I want. Otherwise, I'd be scrubbing forever here to get this to work, especially with black. This will go all the way up to 50, by the way. So sometimes you wanna go up to 50, then hold the shift key, click and drag it down, and now we can just dial in the amount of the black clip. And what that does is it stops it looking washed out. Okay, tip number three. One of the things you might be aware of is that we can search inside the libraries here. And so we can search for anything. We can go for the current library or all the libraries, you know, and I could do something like logo. And all the logos within all the libraries are gonna appear here, or I could, you know, do woman. And all the photos that appear in all the different libraries right now are available here. But here's a cool tip, is if I go under here and I change this to Adobe Stock, I can search Adobe Stock directly within Photoshop. So let's do a search for landscape. And notice all the different things we can search for. I've got a set to photos right now. So here's a cool thing, is if I pull this up and then I just expand it like this, we now have a browser window within Photoshop 
that enables us to browse Adobe Stock. And if I want to download any of these, I can actually just click on there. It will download it here and I can double click to open it. And then this will give you a watermarked version of this that you can do everything you want. You can experiment with it. You can composite them together. You can do different things. And then later on, if you decide that you want to use this, well, you can actually just go on there, right click, license the image, and then it'll be replaced with the full resolution version without the watermark. And in fact, all the things you've done inside your document, it will be replaced directly in there. Tip number four, using the history brush. So here we have a photo and I might want to do some work on this. Why don't we go up under here and we're going to go to the camera raw adjustment here. So let's go to the camera raw filter and let's do some adjustments here. So, you know, kind of like this ice, I'd like to, you know, maybe warm it up a little bit. Maybe I want to recover some of the details here. Maybe I'll even open up the exposure a little bit. Add a little more contrast. So we can see what we're doing there. And then I'm just going to click OK to apply it. Now, I kind of like what I've done to the ice, but I don't like what's happened to the rest of the image. So here's what you can do. You can actually create a new layer. So we're going to be working non-destructively. Then we go under our history brush. Now we want to open up the history panel. So we go under window, we're going to choose history. And then we're just going to click right next to open. So what we want to do now is we want to paint with the state, which is what's here is right before there. In fact, if we click on it, we can see it. So right now we're painting into this state, but we are selecting from there with our history brush and we're going to paint onto the new layer. So why don't I just make this brush a little bigger and I can paint back. Look at this. I'm just painting back a previous version of it. And I kind of like what we've got over here, but I like the new ice. So we can just kind of do that. And if you want, you could even dodge and burn with the previous version going around the edges. Look at that. It's pretty crazy. And that's tip number four. Tip number five, everybody loves a good cutout, but not everybody loves select a mask. So I'm going to show you a secret squirrel handshake, how to get back the old refine edge inside of Photoshop CC. So here we go. Let's do a cutout really quickly, select color range. And I'm just going to click on that color there Hit the plus tool, increase the fuzziness to about there. Now we're going to invert command shift I. So we've got most of our selection here. And now let's just grab our quick select tool and we're just going to finish off our selection. All right, so we've made a selection, but now we want to go up here and we could click on select a mask, but let's choose refine edge. And if we go into select, you can see there select a mask. Well, where's refine edge? Well, here's the tip. Hold down the shift key and choose select mask. And now refine edge is going to come up. And by the way, you can't do it from up here in a button. You have to do it from the menu to that for that to work. And you know, then we could just use this because sometimes refine edge does a better job on some of these sharp edges and these clean edges than the selector mask would. So we're just going to go around there, fix the hair. Looks great. And let's open this a new layer for layer mask and boom, we're done. All right. I said I'd give you a bonus tip. Well, here's the bonus tip. You may or may not be aware of the fact if you hold down the control and the option key on Mac and drag up or down, we can make the brush harder or softer side to side. We can make it larger or smaller on windows. That's alt right drag. Okay. That's not the tip. The tip here is a super color picker. So if I want to hold down the alt control and command keys on Mac and click the super color picker comes up. Look at this. So I can select any color I want, go down here, choose the color, pop over here. I can choose exactly how light or dark I want it and I can choose how saturated it is. So I can go in there and select any color and notice that affects the color picker right there on windows. That's alt shift and right drag on your mouse to get that super color picker. So which of these tips is your favorite? Let me know in the comments underneath.
And by the way, how many of these were new? How many did you know? And how many of these did you not know? I'd love to know. Tell me in the comments underneath. Oh, by the way, if you're looking for images um, like these images, I grabbed all of these from Adobe Stock and I've got a link underneath where you can grab 10 free images. And if you do take photos, you can also sell them on Adobe Stock, get them in front of millions of people and make some extra revenue. And I'll give you a link underneath to become a contributor to Adobe Stock. So anyway, if you're not a subscriber to Photoshop Cafe, consider hitting that subscribe button right now and then you're gonna get new tutorials like this all the time. Now, I've had a few people who are subscribers who say they're not getting any alerts, and that's because you've gotta hit that notification bell. Don't forget to hit that too. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash that like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.